Dragon Quest really is my favorite series of all time. I've loved it ever since I played the very first game as a little kid back in 1989. But now, here, I get to relive the magic of playing the same game that I did when I was 7 years old, but with a ton of added quality of life improvements, brand new additions, mini games, dungeons, post game content, and even a ship. And best of all, this game is absolutely free, and I am going to include a link down below in the video description if you want to download it and try it out yourself. Hi there everybody, this is David, and if you are new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe for some more great content like top 10s, news, and reviews, and smash that like button to show your love. And now, let me tell you all about Dragon Quest Plus. This game here has definitely been making its rounds on the internet. I got comments on videos about it, emails about it, and I even read an article about it, so... I figured that I should probably check it out myself. First things first though, this is not a ROM hack. You don't need an emulator or a ROM to play this. Hell, you don't even need money because it's absolutely free. In fact, Dragon Quest Plus was created from the ground up in RPG Maker 2003, over the course of 11 years, and while it is currently available only in English, a French localization is in the works which should be released within the year. And if you think that you've played Dragon Warrior on the NES and you've seen everything that there is to see there, well think again, because this definitely breathes some new life into that old classic. When you first start the game up, you're introduced to the changes immediately, because you're asked to choose from one of three different difficulty levels, and then you undergo a personality test, just like in the Dragon Quest III Remake. But the changes don't end there. Your movement speed has been greatly increased when you're in towns and dungeons, new islands have been added to the world map which has also been greatly expanded upon, some of the old dungeons receive new treasures and layouts, and that there is just scratching the surface. The battles are still turn based and the basic story structure of saving the princess and killing the dragon lord, that's all still there, as are all the various towns and the dungeons that you know and love. So all the bones of the classics still exist but it's just been fleshed out in so many different ways. You're able to visit the hero's home, stumble across various shrines, homes, and new dungeons, as well as towers around the world, adding in new lore and new side quests that really do help further tie it in with the rest of the Urgent Trilogy. As you explore the world map, you'll encounter treasure chests, hidden sparkles and items, mini medals, stat seeds, and just so much more different stuff. Your hero has been further powered up as well with a plethora of new spells that you get to learn, such as like the buff spell, zoom and squelch, because you'll need that along with antidote herbs to take care of the new poison status. Chimera wings now take you to each and every town, and saving is no longer just restricted only to Tangentil Castle. Every single town has its own church where you can save at, and all the towns have been greatly expanded with new NPCs, new shops, new side quests, wells to go spelunking down into, and of course, plenty of barrels, pots, and bags to go rummaging through for all those hidden items. Not to mention, there's a banking system, so on the off chance that you do die, at least what you have saved there you won't lose. All the enemies that you know and love from the first game are here, but new enemies from future games have been added in as well, along with all new spells and abilities really testing your metal. I also thought that it was really cool how treasure drops have been introduced too, because we all know enemies did not drop any items in the original game. Another one of the changes that I thought was just so neat was really just the entire town of Hawksness, because if you played the original, you know that there's really nothing there, it's just an abandoned and destroyed town and you just make a beeline over to get Erdrick's armor. But here it is completely different, there are some survivors clinging on for dear life, and whenever you do get Erdrick's armor, not only does your sprite change when you equipped it, but the overworld music changes too, and it changes over to the Dragon Quest III overworld music. It is such a cool touch. Some little things that did kind of irk me though was that you can actually die from poison damage. It doesn't just kind of like take it down to 1 HP. You can also die from swamp terrain damage too, so do be on the lookout for that. And, unlike in the original game, torches can run out, so make sure that you always carry a full supply with you. The last thing that you want to do is be in the depth of a cave and have your torch run out because you're screwed if that happens. Now, another thing that we're all aware of is that 
The first Dragon Quest, it's short, and there wasn't a whole lot to the original game, and that's why here a massive post-game was introduced, where everybody's dialogue has changed, and you can even grab a ship and go sailing around the world and see all the different islands surrounding Alephgard, and even jump into like some travel gates and explore various worlds inspired by Dragon Quest Monsters 1 and 2. Personally, I have played the original Dragon Quest game like a million times, not only on the NES, but also on the Game Boy Color, as well as the SNES Remake, but all of those really do just pale in comparison to Dragon Quest Plus. This really is just like a fantastic game, and I had so much fun with it. It reminded me of the Final Fantasy VI T edition, where they take a great game and they just added so much more to it. And I love whenever indie developers are able to take an old classic and just kind of like put a new spin on it and breathe new life into it so more people can enjoy it. A couple of things that I do want to note, though, is that there are two versions of the game. There's an Intel version and an AMD version. So you're going to have to go onto your computer and check which version works for you. Check out your operating system for that. And also, if you do want controller support, you're going to have to take the game and add it manually to your Steam library. Then from there, you can finagle your controller support and edit it around. And I even was able to figure out how to do this. And I am notoriously terrible at computers. So if I can do it, you can do it. I have faith in you. Also, I went ahead and I did reach out to the developer and I asked him if he had any other plans to remake like the other Dragon Quest games in the same vein. He said that he didn't. However, he is currently working on developing a brand new IP that is heavily inspired by Dragon Quest, as well as those classic Game Boy games like Link's Awakening and Great Greed. And with pedigree like this behind him, I am sure that he has a great career in game development ahead of him. So, if you want to try out Dragon Quest Plus for yourself, be sure to follow the links below in the video description. Because if you're an old school gamer like me, this is something that you do not want to miss. And hey y'all, if you do like what I do here on the channel, please head on over to the Patreon and sign up for early access to my videos, as well as behind the scenes photographs. The link to it is over in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.